So uh, can I just have everyone kind of go, just say, tell us what city you're in so that we have an idea geographically. Anybody from the States? Any, you know, uh, let's start with that. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm in Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada. Upper or lower city? Lower. <laughs> It's funny how only people that have been from the area didn't understand what that means and yeah, why that's it's important. True. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that just means are you in the upper floors of an apartment building or the lower yeah. floors? Two <laughs> different worlds. Old world, yeah. new, world. <laughs> new world. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That's yeah. true. Nancy, what about you? Uh, I live near Dundurn, Hamilton, but oh. I only really just moved to Hamilton two years ago from Toronto. So before I had a chance to go out and meet people, which was my New Year's resolution this year. Oh no! Completely, <laughs> no, completely got like destroyed that plan. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why I'm here. So just <laughs> online, online meetings, trying to meet people still because really it's a new environment. Yeah. It is awesome. Well, I'm glad that you did join us. And Aiden, I know where you're from, but you go ahead. Well, yeah. Unseen forces have definitely uh, have stopped us from communicating with a lot of people, except for this way, right? Through yeah. uh, through online through online meetings or online webinars and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm from Brantford, the home of the invention of the telephone and the uh, and the biggest hockey player in the world and biggest sport athlete in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's our claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we actually have a few, but that's good. <laughs> uh, yep. I'm also in Brantford. They're the biggest ones. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm also in Brantford. Um, Sita, what about you? I think you're in the Toronto area, right? Yep, first. I'm in Scarborough. Awesome. Right. right. Awesome. And Adam? Oh, Scarborough. I'm in Markham, Ontario. Markham. I knew you were somewhere out there, but I wasn't sure where you yeah. were. <laughs> It is kind of out there relative to like Toronto and uh, Brantford and all, and even Hamilton in, in that case as well. Yeah, oh, you know, to people like, that live know. on this side of Toronto, that's like the other side of the moon to us. <laughs> <laughs> I went yeah. to Scarborough one time. Oh my gosh, it took forever and ever and ever. <laughs> you got to do it in 407 time, right? I mean, and, uh, and Markham, it's easy to get to. You just take Finch and boom, you're in Markham now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It takes all forever right. like TTC time too, so it's all good yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, um, Catherine, what about you? Hi, Catherine. I'm from uh, Burlington. I was from Lower Stony Creek, though, King and Green area, so that's why I asked. Oh, mm. and, and Ivan, I know you're in Hamilton, Hamilton as well. Hamilton, you bet. The great yep. city of the hub of the world. The <laughs> yes, once, once you come here, you don't want to leave. It's so <laughs> stunning. <laughs> Anyway, just <laughs> and so Donna actually just moved from Burlington out to Nova Scotia literally last week. She's still under quarantine out there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on mute, Donna. All right, well, Vicki, we're glad that you joined us as well. We'll give Donna a second to get herself off mute. And where we were just talking about where everybody's from. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. So where am I from? Yeah, yeah. What community are you in? Um, so I, I'm in Grimsby, actually, um, but I just moved here a couple years ago from Guelph. I've been in Guelph for, since a teenager, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. And so now you're in the Grimsby area. Beautiful yeah. community there, too. It is. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Donna, now you're showing off. Yes, she is showing off. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to listen. Yeah. Add the comments. Don't encourage it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Donna, you're in Halifax now, right? Or just outside of Halifax? I am just outside of Halifax. We moved in our house last Tuesday. So we're on, I've got two more days of isolation in Nova Scotia because you need to do your 14 days here. So we did five days in an Airbnb and Wednesday I'm free to go out. So this girl will be traveling a lot on Wednesday. <laughs> awesome. Our first spot will be Costco, of course. Excellent. Um, but Donna, you originally came from the Burlington area, right? I was in Burlington for 21 years. Right. Oh, and where did you come from before that? I'm from Newfoundland. Oh, from Newfoundland. Well, see, there she is. I'm not really an Ontario person. I'm from Newfoundland. I just live in Ontario. <laughs> that explains why you always seem like an East Coaster to me. <laughs> <laughs> I am. 
<laughs> Good morning, Maggie. I see that you've joined us as well. Glad to have you. We were just having a discussion about where well, the communities that everybody is in. Yeah, um, well, right now I'm staying in Hamilton, but that might only be for a couple of days. Uh, originally from Burlington, spent a lot of time in the Niagara area, but uh, now that I don't have the house, I can go anywhere I want. <laughs> You know, there's something to be said for having that kind of uh, freedom. <laughs> so, Teresa, I, I know that you've joined and know sometimes you have some issue with some background noise there. So, um, if you're able to jump on, uh, and if you're not, that's okay too. Um, yeah, I'm here. Uh, we're in Hamilton, and um, I'm not sure if I missed the roundabouts, but if I did, uh, I'm with my agency, and we're a marketing company that does a website, social media, SEO, a lot of design. Um, and branding, which um, I'm sure you've heard of through Ivan. <laughs> we have, thank I'm you. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you, that you made it. We were, we were actually just talking about where everybody was from, uh, but we are going to go around uh, in a few minutes and get everybody to, to introduce their business, what they do. Um, so I, first, I just want to say welcome, everybody. This is fantastic. I love that every week we never know who's going to show up, and uh, it's always a different cast, so that's awesome. Um, so my name is Sherry Lozier. Um, I am a consultant and executive coach uh, with my agency and uh, also a director with Distinctability um, and, of course, an affiliate with um, this great city. So here we are today, our Monday Morning Hustle. Um, one of the things that I love about the group that we've been developing is our ability to learn from one another, uh, grow our network, and really find ways to help our businesses flourish. And that's really what I wanted behind uh, developing our Monday Morning Hustle was to give us an opportunity to connect to new people, but also a little something to work on through the weeks. Um, and especially during COVID where sometimes we all felt a little um, like there was not much to do or not much purpose. Um, so at this point, we've gone through quite a number of different um, discussions. And this morning, I thought one of the great things would be uh, a discussion about collaboration. Um, a lot of businesses are, you know, trying to figure out how to reopen and redevelop their market. Um, we're looking at ways to become sustainable again um, as we see, you know, the new world around us. And we were talking a bit about that first thing this morning, how it's a little different for those emerging from you know, staying isolated. Um, so this morning we're going to talk about biz business collaboration. So what that looks like, what an actual collaboration might be. There's lots of different ways to collaborate that maybe you haven't thought of. Um, we're also going to talk about some rules around collaborating so that you're um, able to think through that process and what that might look like. Um, and I'd really love also um, if we have time at the end to have a chat about you know, what opportunity you now see from the conversation um, that would fit for your business and uh, just to see what's developed. And you never know, there might be somebody else on here that you might find a, a good purpose to collaborate um, with over something. So, um, so what we'll do is we'll take a quick minute to go around and let everybody do their um, introductions for themselves, their infomercial. Um, but before we do that, I wanna remind everybody who's been and let those who have not know, we make sure that we, uh, in the chat box, send out our contact information to everybody. So if somebody else on the group wants to reach out to you and connect offline, they're able to do so. So please make sure you've got whatever contact information you prefer people to get through to you. Um, and, uh, and we're going to introduce ourselves, just a short introduction, so about 30 seconds, what your name is, what your business is, and what you do, um, and, uh, and who the, your, your target audience is right now that you'd like to connect to. So if we can start, I love how my screen and your screens won't look the same. So I'm thinking in my head, I'll start at the top and work my way across. Except they move, so we're not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep track. Um, so Anthony, how about we start with you? Okay, so my name is Anthony Reed and I'm starting a residential and commercial cleaning company. And um, my target market is um, B2B and um, just the general public. So I'm happy to be here to learn and see who I can connect with because I'm almost in the last stages of um, having it in um, the finishing stage so I can actually promote the business. Awesome, that's fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. welcome. 
exciting Thank to you. be able to say you're launching a new business oh. in this moment in time. So that's awesome. Very Thank cool. Uh, Catherine, how about you? Good morning, everyone. I'm Catherine Davies. Uh, my company is Life's Emergency Training, although I am one of the city leaders in Burlington. At Life's Emergency Training, we are a first aid CPR and AED on-site trainer, recently approved for a blended learning. Our niche is industrial commercial, so factories, uh, manufacturers, uh, home builders. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks. Ivan? I'm Ivan uh, Sutton. I'm the city leader for Hamilton, the great city of. I also am partner at myagency.ca, which is a digital marketing company here in Hamilton that, that works with small and medium-sized businesses to increase their digital footprint online. Fantastic. Aiden, how about you? He's got to find that mute, unmute. No, no, I don't. No, no, I know this too well. I know this too well. Don't worry. I'm well rehearsed with webinars now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so my name is Aiden LaFave, and I run actually a number of businesses. Uh, one of the businesses I run is Grace Gallery, which you'll see in the background here. You'll see different uh, photography and and different paintings and, and whatnots all hanging up. So um, that's, uh, that's one of the businesses I run is an art gallery called Grace Gallery. The other business I run is a student residence called Scholars Hall. Excellent. And all my rooms are taken right now, so I'm sorry if you're a student, you can't come in here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you, I'm glad you made it. And Nancy, how about you? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, this is my first time coming to this meeting. So I'm just going to learn everyone's, I guess, uh, businesses and names at the same time and faces, uh, hopefully. So um, I was a science student um, in university. And then I discovered this profession really, um, I guess, a small profession called medical illustration where people combine science with art. So I went to school for that and then um, have been a freelancer for two years. And then this year I was planning to start like to start a larger business with uh, uh, other partners from our industry and then run into the COVID situation, but we managed to actually launch the business online for the past few months and trying to do like learn a lot of software and learn a lot of like online collaboration. So everyone works remotely right now, including myself and uh, my target audience uh, right now, they have been researchers from different universities and hospitals, um, drug companies, uh, different like companies that makes medical device and medical technologies. Yeah. Very cool. That's interesting. I've heard of this sort of as a thing, this, uh, you know, these uh, science based uh, art things where they're taking. So if I understand correctly, it's like, uh, you know, various uh, scans of medical things, and then you're turning that into art. Is that way? Am I understanding that correctly? So there are different, I guess, ways. Sometimes people focus on, for example, making art for textbooks right? Like making mm. understandable pictures for textbooks. Sometimes it's combined with like marketing campaigns. Um, sometimes it's combined with animations. So there are like a lot of different things. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you joined us today. So that's cool. Adam, how about you? Hi there. My name is Adam Kafaji. I am a web designer and mobile developer and the founder of Adamant Industries, a web design and mobile development outfit based here in Markham, Ontario. Um, I believe in my business beliefs in this idea of perfection through iteration, the idea that no matter how long it takes or what it takes, we can make the website or the application of your dreams a reality. Insofar as my, uh, my target audience is concerned, um, I mostly deal with like smaller scale clients. Anyone who doesn't 
who, who's, who, who's um, sort of a small player in, in any market and I sort of help them improve their, their online presence and any technological stuff that may come up just to sort of, you know, help them get their bearings in and help contextualize um, everything in that field, which is kind of, you know, a little bit confusing at first to get to get your grips with and to make it a bit more easier and approachable and less daunting. Very cool. Awesome. All right, Maggie, how about you? A writer. Uh, my specialty and favorite is travel writing, but I do copywriting. I can do, I can write almost anything. Um, uh, anything from some emails to some social media um, posts to full articles, um, whether we travel, lifestyle, um, promoting your business. Um, I can take, uh, I can kind of dig in and see what's unique about your particular business and, um, and then expand on that for you and get that message out. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Sita, how about you? Morning, everybody. I'm Sita. And um, before the COVID, I was actually planning on returning to school going back to school to start like a new um, passion of mine, which is home decorating. So in light of what's happened that I had to put that on hold and now I'm trying to find new, a new way of um, getting into that business. And so this is the purpose of why I've been going, uh, I've been attending all these Zoom meetings to network, to get feedback, to get advice from um, people who, who know a thing or two about how to promote well your business. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. Well, we're glad that you came. Donna, how about you? Good morning, everyone. My name is Donna Smith-Maker. I just launched a new business officially last night, and I've not said this out loud yet, and I've just told like maybe two friends and my husband. Um, a new company is coming into Canada. It's called The Body Shop at Home. So it's basically anybody, if you know the body shop, it's the exact same thing. So my, who I'd be looking for is anybody that shops at the body shop now, they can purchase from an individual consultant where we can help you with any of the products that you would normally go to the store and buy. So they're branching out into more of an online business now because of, I guess, what they see in the future is going to be happening. So they're just launching into Canada. They're gathering people now and getting all the, everything organized. So it should be official in the next few months. That's awesome. You awesome. are you are a very brave soul, let me tell you. <laughs> no, I've not said those out, word, out loud yet. That's the first time. I haven't even told my kids yet, really. So. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Donna is going through some pretty big stuff this past year. <laughs> All right. Who did I miss? I missed Teresa, but you got a chance to go already. Uh, did I miss anybody? Oh, Vicki has dropped off, so hopefully she'll rejoin us. We'll give her a chance um, to chat when she comes back. So, um, so what I'd like to do is just start off talking about um, the kinds of collaborations that are possible. Um, and I've worked with a number of different partners to do collaborations on a lot of different things. And I have to say that it's probably one of the more rewarding things. Um, and part of that for me, is because uh, you know what, if you're a solopreneur, you know that we work pretty independently and yes, we are constantly interacting with clients and customers, but there's a difference. You're the one, you're the one and only, right? Or, or maybe you've got a spouse or one other person that you're working with, but you, there's not a lot of socialization. You don't get to go to the office. You don't get to wander through and say good morning to everybody and you know, stop at the water cooler to have that conversation or whatever the case may be. And I find that collaboration is really amazing because it puts you in a position where you've got some new connection um, with somebody else and it, it opens up the door for uh, creativity and, um, you know, bringing ideas together in a new and uh, specific way. So that's one of the reasons why I have found collaboration to be one of my favorite things to do. But for most businesses, part of the reason for doing it is really about gaining, you know, access to a new customer base or uh, increasing, uh, increasing your ability to work with the customers that you work with because maybe you're adding on services. So there's lots of reasons to do it. Um, for the most part, anybody who's looking to expand their business in any way, shape or form, collaboration is, is, is a wise choice. And especially because in some cases, it's just a freelancer, right? 
So my, mm -hmm. my web design company, my uh, marketing uh, agency, my copywriter, um, could be my printer, could be my uh, virtual assistant. There's lots of opportunities there to collaborate in an official capacity, but there's other ways to do that as well. So I just want to talk about some, a couple of ideas. And if you come up with something else, throw them out. So, oh, I think Anthony's on the phone. I was just going to say, are you trying to say something? <laughs> um, so if you have some other thoughts, please feel free to throw them out. I'm certainly not the dictionary of end all the be all, but these are some of the common ones that, um, that businesses are engaging in to try and build their base or to try and expand their business. So the first one that I often will talk about is just general cross promotions. Um, so in other words, you know what, I'm, I'm running a sale on uh, widgets and uh, uh, maybe Donna has a, a sale on um, thingamabobs and, and it just makes sense for us to post those together, um, you know, and, and try and sell them at the same time, right? So one ad that says, shows this and this, um, or it could be that you're at a trade show and you're sharing a booth. And um, so every customer that you talk to, you're able to say, and by the way, did you meet my partner? And anyone watch How I Met Your Mother? Do you know the, have you met Ted? <laughs> so it's just the opportunity to introduce somebody else at the same time. And it's a great way to also share the expenses. Trade shows especially can be very expensive. So sharing a booth might be a good way to reduce your costs and also, if you're agreeable to sharing the contacts that you made, now you both have the, the contacts, but there's two people working that show. That can make a huge difference. Um, another one is guest podcasts. So everybody under the sun has a podcast or a video show. Um, and so a great way to get your name out there and meet new people is being a guest on one of those. Um, and that is something that we can do at this great city. So you'll have to chat with us afterwards about that. But, but that is something that you can do with a lot of different people out there who are doing podcasts. Um, start following a couple, find some that have some interesting topics to you that relate to your business. Uh, it's easy to reach out to them and, and find an opportunity to speak. Um, guest posts are another thing. And so those guest posts, we're talking more social media. So for example, I could say, you know, I'm really trying to connect into the market where, um, you know, uh, maybe the art world, I want to connect into the market full of artists. And, and uh, so I might say to Aiden, hey, um, I'd really love to do um, some guest posts that are directed at some of the artists that you work with. And I would love an opportunity to uh, just share some insights with them and um, help them with their business, getting their, you know, whatever done. And um, so that's a great opportunity for me to do that by the same token, of course, reciprocating that, right? So um, for some of my businesses, a great way for them to expand might be, and this is a big one, um, you know, when we talked about social responsibility last week, it's also supporting, um, you know, nonprofits, local small businesses. So I might be able to then say, let's do a little bit of a, a reach out to my client base and say, hey, uh, you know, are you using gifts to give to your customers? Here's a great person that can supply a unique type of gift. You could sell, you could purchase some art pieces from some of the, um, the people who are displaying in the gallery and, and then you would be able to give those as gifts. Um, or you might want to use those as a picture for the cards that you're sending out uh, for Christmas or whatever the case may be. So those kinds of um, guest posts where you're sharing information about one another's businesses back and forth um, allows you to tap into their audience um, and vice versa so that they're you're just building that a little bit of awareness. Uh, another one is learning materials and this is a really great source so for example again an education piece where I might say for example talk about um, you know a business um, strategies around team building and by the same token, uh, we might look at something like, uh, you know, marketing, uh, creating an internal marketing campaign, for example, with a company for employee engagement. 
And so now there's a totally different way of approaching that. We would develop materials that maybe are um, really intended to market internally to, cut to uh, internal customers or employees. Um, and so I might go to Ivan and say, okay, we need to build uh, this really cool piece. This is what I'm thinking of. And so we could collaborate on something like that where it would be a benefit to both of our customer base. Uh, something else would be, um, you know, just your traditional um, cross distribution. So uh, let's just say that, um, Anthony, let's say that we happen to have the same target audience. And, uh, and I said, you know, I was thinking about sending out a postcard, uh, just having a postal mm -hmm. drop done in a particular area. And uh, I thought, you know, it'd be great if we could split on that. So one side of the postcard is my business and one side of the postcard is your business. Um, and so we split the cost and now there's one postcard going out, but it's a shared cost. And so of course it reduces what the expense is. So you see those Val packs. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, getting together in a small group and doing something like that. Um, there was a time when I had a printing company and one of the things that we actually did was um, we would do like a, a, a small uh, business neighborhood, so a particular area of the city where we would get, you know, uh, six to ten businesses to collaborate on a, uh, a marketing piece, and then we would blanket a significant portion of the city to bring people into that area. Um, it was a great marketing tool, by the way. Um, so there's another opportunity to do that, right? That that traditional marketing stuff, which can be really expensive, but how can you how can you share that cost with another business that's um, that's a good fit. And we'll talk about what those fits might look like in a few minutes. Um, social media influencer. Now, I don't think I'm uh, by any stretch of the imagination <laughs> in the category of an influencer. So as a business, I might reach out to someone who is, uh, has a really significant number of um, followers and something about their choices. So Donna, maybe Donna, you would be looking for someone who is a, um, in that sort of world of lifestyle and maybe there's a particular age range that you're looking for. So you find a social media influencer out there who um, you can build a bit of a connection with. You can encourage your followers to follow that person. Um, and then they start talking about you. They start talking about the products that you offer. Oh my God, I love being able to get my, my body shop stuff from Donna because I'm, I don't have to go to a store. And, you know, every time we have wine together, every time, <laughs> uh, you know, so now you're building that relationship. And of course you create some kind of a referral or whatever makes that balanced. Right. So that would be a great way to develop something. Um, now so you'll also have to have lobster with that too. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can have one up and holding on to it, I guess. <laughs> I just, just fair warning, I will be coming out to visit at some point in the next year, so be prepared. <laughs> I have, I have a really, I have a, lots of extra room, I've told Fine. everyone. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one is really about product bundling. So for example, um, Maggie, you do uh, content writing and, you know, Ivan does marketing. So very might, well might work that he has a particular client who's a travel agent, for example. Um, and he realizes, hey, this is a great market. I want to I want to break into this market a little further. Well, there's a possibility that um, you two would be able to create a bundled uh, set of services together and mm -hmm. specifically target travel agents. I don't know if that's your target just an example, um, but then you would be able to target travel agents with a, you know what, here's how we will put together this particular thing. I don't know, it could be a blog site um, and, uh, and you are able to offer, you know, they do their own blogs, but once a month you write that blog for them, maybe you're ghost writing for them mm -hmm. or something, right? So there's a bundled package now that they're getting um, services from both of you and, and it's your expertise, not just I can do everything. It's your expertise and you've put them together. Now they have a package and they don't even have to think about it, right? That's something that they, uh, hey, I'll pay out the money for somebody else <laughs> to do that. So that would, that would be an example of some kind of a shared product. Um, you know, somebody offered cleaning products and Anthony was going out and, and uh, utilizing those cleaning products because they were environmentally friendly, for example. 
that could be a bundled product that you would be able to use. So making a connection with somebody who creates those products or even with one of the companies like Melaleuca or something like that, where that's what they sell, um, that could be a, that could be a great. How, how, I mean, that, to me, that's, that's simply transactional. Is there any sort of reciprocation that's, re, that's involved in collaboration? Yeah, and I think that's really important because um, kind of when we start talking about what those pieces look like, understanding what the benefit is for both, it has to balance or it has to at least feel for both people that it's balanced, right? So in some cases, there will be monetary reward and in other cases, it might be, uh, you know, awareness that's built. Um, it could be a lot of different things. And so one of those pieces in identifying who it is that you want to work with is also what am I going to get out of it and what are they going to get out of it right, right? so you could I mean I could go to you and say okay I have this great idea uh I I want to and you could be like yeah but I don't <laughs> I don't but, but, but I mean, we, that's we, not my target all, I'm getting nothing out of this I don't want to do that right yeah, so we all have we all have people that we we meet with, especially when you go to a, a networking event or whatever it is, and someone comes up to you and says, "Hey, listen, you know what? Let's collaborate on this." But really, what they want is for you to just buy their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's all they want. So yeah. what we're looking at is, you know, for me, collaboration means you want me to buy your stuff, but you're also going to, you know, for a certain your segment of what I'm, I'm offering, uh, you're going to also help me out on my stuff. I'll I'll work with you on yours. You're going to help me out on mine, right? so that there's a win-win. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think the idea behind all of this stuff really is that it is reciprocal. It's a balance. So it's not just you go to somebody and say, hey, I want to collaborate, buy my stuff, you know, pay me X number of dollars. That's not collaboration. That's just a customer. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no, each of these things really is about a collaboration. And so it's defining what the, the rules of engagement are and uh, what the what the outcomes are supposed to be, right? So maybe it is simply just the fact that you share the expense on a postcard and that's it. And there's nothing more than that. It just reduces your costs. That's okay. If that's all you need to get out of the relationship and that's all the other person wants out of the relationship, then absolutely. I think, um, so as we talk about the how-to matches, um, it, we, we, we're gonna talk a little bit about how would you find that right match for you? What, what matters, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to throw out a couple more really quickly. There's actually lots of other ideas, um, but I'm going to throw these out as quickly as possible. So shared resources. So it could very well be that I have an office and uh, you give me 50 bucks a month and you can use one of my offices, <laughs> whatever. Um, or it could be that I've got all of this, the uh, materials for doing presentations and, uh, but I don't have office space. Okay, well, I'm going to use all of your equipment um, and presentation material, you're going to have space in my office and we'll share that. Again, there's another collaboration. Um, sharing team members works as well. So um, there's lots of virtual assistants out there. So realistically, you kind of are, but um, you know, there could be multiple people in one office that are using one assistant. Um, or you could have phone lines established that I don't need my own phone line. Uh, I just need some, somebody to answer the phones. So it's reception services, perhaps. So there's lots of ways to do that where you're sharing resources and that can be people or it could be items. Um, referral programs, uh, you know, have you looked at who you know that might be able to provide referrals? And the other one that goes with that is affiliates. So affiliate links where you would put something on your website um, that tracks, you know, this is your link specifically. I've put it on my website. So Anthony, anybody that clicks on the link from my website, you're going to get notification that it was somebody that came from my website. I don't know how you set this up, Adam, Ivan, you guys know how to do this. <laughs> um, but, you know, then you know exactly how many times somebody is clicking the link to your website from mine. And so there's a great opportunity there for referrals, but you can also do traditional methods of referrals. Tell me three people. Especially, if it, makes sense. Especially if it makes sense to what you're doing. I mean, if you go to our website, we, we have a, uh, an affiliate link to uh, lead theater. They, uh, they, if you, um, they actually scrape the internet to find uh, people in the specific uh, area that you want. It'll not only find out the company name, but it'll also find the, the owner and the owner's email address by scraping the internet and pulling information in from all over the place then giving you a nice lead list which is nice right by the way that's a shameless plug but anyway that link is on my <laughs> is on my website you can just go on there and click on it and every time you click on it 
right? I mean, if you make that purchase, the cookie stays on your computer, right? So even if you don't make that purchase today and you go back in a few days and you make that purchase, um, as long as you don't clear your cookies, then, uh, then guess uh, who, who makes a, a bit of money here? And that's, uh, that's us. So if you happen to be a, a, a cleaner or, or anything, and there's something that makes total sense, by the way, anybody that you deal with on a regular basis, they probably have an affiliate program of some sort. So just yeah. find out about especially, that. Especially in the online world, a lot That's of right. software Put companies have site. affiliate links. Yeah, for sure. I ask um, that. What's that? Sorry, Donna? Can I ask a question about that? Do I then? Yeah. So I'm just using, I'm going to use me as an example. So let's say, because I'm, I'm just, I've only been always planning out I'm going to run this business. So if you have my name and my business on your website information and people click on it, and they purchase, who actually pays you a little bit of the commission that you get? Right, so, so the folks at Lead Feeder, they, there's actually a, 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 an interface that I log into and I can tell how many people have made the purchase. And I actually set the amount, like how, when do I want them to cut, to transfer money to my account? I say, you know, when I hit $50 or $100 or whatever it is, and then they'll transfer it over. So you log into their interface, they're tracking all the information. And, um, and so all I do, is even in situations like this, I might mention the company name um, and say, you know, I, I, I highly recommend this company or whatever it is. Yeah. Sometimes I'll say, you know, I recommend them. I'm, at, I'm an affiliate actually, I like them so much. Um, try them out and then if you go to the site, I can go in there after the call and see how many people have gone there since the call. And uh, yeah, and they, they manage everything. So in other words, whoever does the sales basically is the one that's, that's uh, that, you know, whoever's selling the product, sorry, is the one that's paying out the commission. So or let's say the, it's Anthony and you're using his cleaning company. So someone clicks on, it is Anthony. So I'm just looking at Nadia here. So. <laughs> it is Anthony, yes. <laughs> <laughs> someone clicks on, they're looking for a cleaning person and they click on the link and then they go to Anthony's site and they order products from him. I guess you can only track that if they order the products online versus doing it verbally to him. Right. So, so, so let's say Anthony yeah. uh, happens to like, um, uh, so there's, there's a, there's a, a company that provides vans for cleaning companies or yes. okay. these types of things. Right. Um, and Anthony really likes a certain one. He goes to their site. He finds out that the van company has an affiliate program. He goes in there and he says, listen, you know, I have this cleaning company and I really like this van. So I'm just going to put their link on my website for anybody else who wants to have a van for their cleaning company. Every time that somebody clicks on that link, because I mean, the, the product itself, he's making money off of it. He's buying it wholesale, he's selling it, or he's using the products. And that, that's a, a transactional thing. But there are a peripheral things that people that are looking for Anthony may want, like for myself as a, as a marketing company, there may be, there may be telecommunication companies um, or, uh, or like lead feeder app companies that have applications that, that, you know, people that are looking to do things themselves can, can actually utilize, so especially for, on lead generation. There's tons of people who are always looking for lead generation, right? So putting that link on your site, it totally makes absolute sense for me to be selling that because that's not something I do. So as far as building apps for lead generation, or let's say little Adam over here, and I don't mean little, I mean my good buddy Adam here. Adam goes ahead and he builds a number of applications and sets up an affiliate system so that instead of Adam going out and selling it, he lets affiliates go out and sell it, right? Um, and then he just gives the affiliates a, a small piece of it. Every time it's sold, I mean, what a brilliant uh, that's a training um, workshop itself if we could put that on the list okay. <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah i'd be down for that uh, yeah, it and it does benefit all of us in some way that we can kind of include it in different things that we're doing if we can people can just click on other people's links too yeah. well, well listen uh catherine's a tech talk i think catherine there you go okay that's oh, a good topic for on? catherine yeah, so oh so you're on mute catherine um, but Catherine does the Thursday morning, uh, the Thursday morning chat, which is the tech talk. And uh, so we, we cover all sorts of tech uh, conversations. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to shameless Thursday. plug in here for, for Wednesday night. Wednesday night, uh, Melissa uh, Raymond, she, uh, she's the, uh, the, the city leader for, uh, for Mississauga. She does a uh, thing called the, um, the evening mastermind. And this Wednesday night, her discussion is on how do you make money 
from Google, from uh, from Yahoo, not Yahoo, YouTube. <laughs> How do you make money from YouTube? Like, what does it take to build a channel and have that channel start to generate uh, revenue for you? So that's the discussion. You may want to tune in for that. Yeah, four thousand okay. hours. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Um, okay, so the last couple that I have on my list for suggestions that you can look into or consider, um, reviews. Reviews are also something that's incredibly valuable. Um, you know, writing a review for somebody on LinkedIn and or posting on Facebook uh, is one of those things that, um, you know, doesn't really cost anybody. But if you've worked together with a group of people, then everybody should be doing reviews for each other, testimonials or whatever they're called, depending on which site you're on. So that's a great way to collaborate as well. It doesn't cost anybody anything except for a few minutes of your time. Um, beta testing. So this is a great thing that you can try out. Uh, maybe it's a product, maybe it's a service, whatever it is. Um, I've used this for some programs that I've done. So I've asked, you know, four or five people to take this course. Um, and the requirement is that at the end, they give me a testimonial for what it looked like, what it felt like, what their experience was, what they got out of it. Um, and I'm not going to charge them to take it, or it's a minimal fee compared to what they would pay normally. So maybe it's a thousand dollar course, I charge them 50 bucks, so there's some skin in the game kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of beta tests are really good. Um, a mastermind group is fantastic. Mastermind groups can be, um, you know, a, a dedicated group of people who meet on a regular basis with a structure in place. Um, I've helped establish a few of these. And the result that you get out of a mastermind that's well established is, is actually quite extraordinary. Um, and so knowing how to set that up and build it is important, but to have a dedicated group of people who can come together on a regular basis and uh, do much like we do here, only it's, uh, it's, it's structured a little bit differently, uh, but can be incredibly powerful for any business. Um, and then the last one that I have, oh, actually, did I say contests? Ivan, I, I don't know how I miss contests. Come on now. You know, uh, it could just be as simple as, uh, you know, the giveaway uh, that I mentioned earlier today for every, or, or when I posted earlier in the week. So for everybody who's here, they go in a draw, we're going to do a draw at the end of the month. Um, so that kind of a little giveaway may not be a big thing, but it could be that, you know, we've used someone in the group, for example, to provide services or something that they have um, as a product that we can give away. Um, and uh, you want to talk contests. I, Ivan's like the king of contests. He loves building contests. <laughs> I'd love to talk contests. I'm just going to yeah. keep quiet. That's, actually, you know what? I think maybe, yeah, one, we're going to have to build that in. So shh. <laughs> 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 All right. And then the last one is co-hosting an event. Um, so for example, it could be two or three or four or five different businesses that collaborate to bring people together. Um, obviously, you know, that type of event right now would be a little different than we pre previously would have done. And maybe we can go back to that a year in the future. Um, but no matter what it is, collaborating on events is fantastic. And so if you've got a common theme and a common uh, topic that you want to work towards, you know, bringing in a number of businesses that are able to speak to that um, or, or uh, you know, provide something of value to people. Um, as a co-hosted event uh, can be a great way to springboard your business. So, yeah, yeah. Just real quick, sorry. About co-hosting events, you know, the technology exists now, folks, that, um, that if you wanted to have like a day of training, let's say you have five people that are collaborating, we're all pulling our, our resources and our, our contact lists and everything else to, uh, to market to. These events can start off in a single room like this, and then they can break out into separate rooms, all within the same structure, right? So, so the opportunity to switch rooms pops up saying, so you know which room you're going to go into. So Sherry can introduce the, the structure, and then, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, Nadia here is going to have the room talking about startups, and Catherine's going to have hers talking about tech, right? So all of these rooms, and then we just pick which room we, we want to go into. And then, you know, at 11 o'clock, all the rooms automatically switch back to the main hall. And there are so many great things that you can do that technology allows us to do it, even if things don't open up. And the, um, even Zoom allows this. So I uh, just uh, to let you know, you don't have to wait until next year. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Evan. And if you haven't experienced that, that is it is a very effective uh, way of, of bringing people together. I wonder if Zoom has an affiliate program. Anyway, go ahead. 
Right, Aiden. Um, okay, so what I wanted to do now was <laughs> Aiden had a question. I just wanted to oh, sorry, I just wanted to speak on a couple of those. So um, reviews, that is something that I have been asking people to do. So if you have been to Grace Gallery, please leave a review. Go to the Grace Gallery site on on Facebook. I have a site on Facebook called Grace Gallery G plus G. Go there and write a review, please. I really do want more reviews. I need more. So Aiden, can I just jump in for a second? We're actually gonna go, we're gonna do a quick discussion at the end about how we can collaborate with each other. Okay. So, um, so that's actually gonna be one of the questions that we're gonna get to in a couple of minutes. Can you hold that for just a couple of minutes? And then I'd like you to be able to be able to start that off by sharing those. Sure. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so what I want to talk about really quickly before we get to that stage is two things. One of those is rules of engagement. And the other one is how do you pick your partners? Uh, because I think this is really important and something that I have you kind of touched on earlier. Um, and so if I said there's just a handful of things that you really need to know um, that you have to have in that relationship. Um, what would you guys say? What would be one of the things that would immediately jump up and say, okay, I, I can't get into a relationship with another business unless, what do you guys think? Trust. Trust. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Credibility. Mm -hmm. Reliability. Yes. So, yeah. Empathy. Definitely. Yep. Professionalism. Yes, very good. Customer service. Mm -hmm. Ability to effectively communicate. Oh, that's huge. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> hmm. What else? Anything else you guys can think of? Oh, um, unlimited. You know, they're not limited by anything. They, they're able to brainstorm. Mm -hmm. And that can be like a perception or it can be like an actual structural limit as well, right? Mm -hmm. Those are different things for sure. Okay, that's awesome. And, and you know, realistically, I think that without any of those things, I, I don't think anybody would feel comfortable um, to embark on much. I mean, you know, it depends on the level of commitment that require is required for each collaboration. Maybe it's a review, maybe, you know, you, you see certain skills, but not other skills. You may be able to sort of look away, um, you know, but I think that the level of, of, uh, the commitment that's required by the, the collaboration, um, significantly increases how important each of those is. And so you need to keep that in mind. It's a bit of a sliding scale. I mean, if we're just sending out marketing materials uh, together, I just need to know that you're a reliable, credible business um, and that you're not going to somehow end up in hot water and embarrass me because we did this together. But as long as we've both paid our bill, there's not a lot necessarily beyond that. However, if we're planning a massive event or we're collaborating on materials that are going to be going out into the community or, or to clients and you're allowing access, you definitely want to make sure that all those things are in place, right? You bet. You bet. Um, so a couple of the things that I talked about were also goals. Um, if you are not um, aiming for the same things, um, then it seems kind of counterproductive. So if I'm looking to increase um, my credibility in the community, but the other person is really trying to drive in, um, you know, I need, you know, X number of new customers you may actually find that those become counterproductive because that person may have this really strong, you know, salesy approach. And that's not going to work with what you're trying to accomplish by building credibility. So you need to be aware that the goals are aligned. Well, um, mm -hmm. if I'm looking for 10 new clients, but you're looking for 75 new clients, your approach may also be very different. That may be totally reasonable though. Maybe in my line of business, 10 new customers is huge. You need 75 to match that. And that's okay as well. Um, if the intention is to uh, gain new contacts, um, the idea that you're sharing those contacts, the goal is everybody gets new contacts, not I get new contacts and yeah, I'll tell you about a couple of them. So you wanna make sure that your goals that you're setting um, coming out of that, whatever that collaboration is, match closely enough. And also values. So to me, 
um, I need to work with someone who I feel is being authentic. Um, you're going to say what you're saying. And, you know, we have that ability to communicate effectively. And yes, I require empathy. Um, so if that's going to be a problem, I need to think that through and I need to be absolutely certain about that before I move forward. How would I manage that situation if that became a problem? Um, and offset skills. So offset skills and resources. In other words, if I have the exact same personality type, the exact same business and the exact same skills and the exact same resources, why would you collaborate with somebody? <laughs> That's not good for business. I'm just saying. <laughs> The idea is, is that you're expanding in some way and you're utilizing what's coming out of that relationship. So you actually want differing skills and differing resources because then you're benefiting both. You're adding together instead of just squishing them, right? You're just blending and becoming one. And then the other thing that is really important as well is that it's a non-competing business. Now, in some ways, you may encounter people that you do collaborations with that sort of actually compete a bit. So for example, um, Adam and Ivan, there may be some crossover between what you guys do, but you both do it very differently and you have very different target audiences and you do different things in what you We've do. We've actually worked together before. We, uh, we hired a Adam uh, a few times. So uh, excellent. Yeah, love that guy. I should work with <laughs> you as always. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a great brainstormer, I have to say. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> we can tell by what's on his whiteboard actually I, <laughs> but I, I mean i haven't really done too much work on that whiteboard but i've been more working <clears> on <throat> using this my, my journal so yeah i think i probably need to actually remove all that stuff and actually start using it for projects again because i kind of need to go bigger picture again with stuff like this I would stage it, Adam, just for show for calls like this, where people can see the <laughs> stages. But yeah, you know, that's a good idea. Yeah, formulas it's... and things like that. <laughs> that that would make me look way smarter than I feel most times of working <laughs> on stuff. <laughs> that's called imposter syndrome. Come on, yeah, make it till you make it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay, so if you, how many people have actually had an opportunity to do some kind of a collaboration with another business? I'm actually in the middle of one. Okay. I uh, got asked to beta test a um, business and I could see the potential that if I like it and I get to know them, that it would be something that I could refer my um, new entrepreneurs to. Um, so one part of our business is helping people become entrepreneurs, right? Starting their own business. But the legal and the accounting and the, all that stuff is like foreign, right? Um, you know, taxes is a four letter word to me. And so, uh, <laughs> quite a necessary evil, right? But this, this company seems to have it really on, on the go. So it looks like it might, you know, if everything works out all right, be a great combination. Awesome. That's fantastic. Ha has anybody had a collaboration go sideways? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Do you ever have it where you, you're you're collaborating with someone and they and and I think that their your enthusiasm is infectious, so they think, yeah, I can do this, right? <laughs> and they they just really can't. But then they're, they're not they're not they're not being evil about it. They, they, they there is the tearful confession afterwards. I'm so sorry. I just I just can't. You know, uh, but yeah, that um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, you, you move forward true. in the expectation that it's going to work out and they're going to pull their weight, and they just they just can't. Yeah. So you have to tamp down your enthusiasm sometimes. You know what that's like. Uh, yeah. Seriously. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, uh, collaborations fall apart all the time, and the truth is, is uh, that a lot of the reason is because they haven't done the work in advance um, to really suss out what's needed. Um, on both sides. So one side might do a really good job of doing their homework, um, but both sides really have to do the homework to make sure that it's a good fit. Mm -hmm. And so having a bit of a template is a really good way to approach that. Um, and uh, so I've seen collaborations fall apart because of, you know, not matched goals. Um, you know, the inability to communicate effectively through conflict is actually one of the big ones. So if you can't find common ground uh, when you disagree about something um, enough that you can move forward, that that is definitely going to be 
you know, a place that things fall apart. Um, if you if you don't um, get enough uh, of the pieces built in the thought process ahead of time, um, that you're working so hard on the fly, um, then you know you're probably in a situation where you're going to encounter conflict, or you're just not going to be able to meet um, what the needs are of that collaboration. Um, and of course, there is always the lack of matching values. You know, I thought that this person was this person, but in actuality, this is what, you know, they did or that how they behaved or whatever the case may be. Um, so there's lots of reasons why those kinds of collaborations um, will fall apart. And one of the best ways to ensure that you know if it's gonna fall apart is to um, sort of plan ahead for all the possible things that could go wrong. Uh, I'm, I am, don't get me wrong, because I love the, uh, the, the thrill of flying by the seat of your pants. However, um, situations like this really require a lot of forethought. And so it doesn't mean that you should say, no, I don't think I can get into a collaboration because there's too much work ahead it's actually all really important pieces. And so one of the things I always talk about is rules of engagement. Um, doesn't matter who you're talking to, doesn't matter what the situation is, doesn't even matter if it's a business collaboration, but rules of engagement are extremely important and putting the time and energy into thinking those through in advance makes a lot of sense. So if you've gone through those, those you know, handful of things already and you've determined that you feel they're reliable and credible and you like who they are, you trust them, those sorts of things. There's also some other rules of engagement that we really need to take into consideration. So some of those are clear objectives. You're gonna have more than one thing that you need to accomplish in this. You know, We need to develop a marketing piece. We need to have a succinct message. We need to have it make happy of, both of us happy by how it looks. So there's going to be those smaller level important objectives that you need to reach. So understanding in absolute clearest terms what you need and making sure that you're both being honest about that. I need 10, 10 new customers or 10 new contacts for this to be worth my while to put the effort into. If at some point I feel like we're not going to accomplish that, you both need to have that shotgun clause. How do you get out? How do you walk away from that um, without doing damage to the relationship or each other? Okay. Um, making sure that you do in fact have all the resources and tools that you need. So, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna plan an event. We're gonna do this big thing and we're gonna invite people and we're gonna serve lunch and dinner and we're gonna have guest speakers and, okay, well, do you have access to all of that? If you don't have it, do you have the ability to get access to it? Do you have the cash flow to pay for that stuff up front? <laughs> um, so are you looking at all of the resources and tools that you need to actually carry this out before you do it? So whether you decide to collaborate with uh, Joe Schmo over here, or you decide to collaborate with, uh, you know, Jenny over here, it doesn't matter who it is. You need to know what resources are needed for the thing you want to do. Um, and then there needs to be processes for keeping track of information, how things are getting done. Is it a weekly meeting? Is it some kind of a template you use? Do you use Excel? Are you using Teams? What's the process for tracking and keeping all of this stuff organized so that stuff doesn't get missed, so that you know where each other is at? Am I waiting on something from that other person? Ensuring that you have the right people in the right roles and it's clearly defined. So in other words, uh, no, Ivan, I'm in charge of all the creative is probably not, <laughs> um, is probably not going to be a comfortable space for him and may not necessarily be the wisest choice for our collaboration. <laughs> So when you are defining the roles that you want for each person, you need to make sure that everybody knows exactly who's responsible for what and that they're capable of doing it. <laughs> no, no, I want to do all of the creative stuff. And immediately I'm going to be like, you have no idea what you're doing, lady. So no, it's not happening. Um, however, if we're talking about organization and Ivan said, I'm going to organize that, I would be like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> And so having partners that you know that what their skill sets are and they know yours is extremely important. 
Um, an account. What do you of think about broad basing it too? I, I hate to jump in there because I know that our time is uh, is running down, but uh, broad basing the um, your collaborations. And I, I, here's an example, just because we have such a broad a cross section of people on this call. You know, you have um, you have an event going on and you want to put out material. You know, you can definitely use uh, use a, a marketing company to help put together that event because you know, obviously, that's kind of what we do. And of course, you're you're the one who's organizing it. But even pulling in somebody like uh, like Adam to then maybe create an app that's going to you know reach people or 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 Nancy to put together the illustrations, especially if it's a technical type of uh, of of thing. Just pulling in people for small pieces, because at the end of it, you're increasing the uh, the strength of the net, you know, you're, you're broadening, broadening your reach, right? I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think, I think no matter what, you should always be open to those kinds of opportunities to broaden your reach for sure. Um, the interesting thing about brainstorming is that um, it, it forces our brain into a different approach um, for putting things together that you wouldn't necessarily immediately recognize belong together. Um, and so our brain works in two ways. It's either linear or it's um, this hairy carry kind of thing that, that um, when we're not doing linear thinking and we're in the shower and we have one of those moments, we're like, oh my God, I should totally do this. But I didn't think of that before. How did I not think of that before? It, it's the same idea. Sometimes it might not seem like there's a logical collaboration, um, you know, in a space, but the target audience might be the same. So for example, um, Nancy and I may have absolutely nothing in common from our businesses, but it just so happens that, um, you know, my business partner comes from the laboratory technology industry in her history. And she actually, you know, is kind of curious and interested. And we don't know what that looks like. That's actually true. Um, but <laughs> she really does have a background in that. Um, but for her, um, she might actually be thinking, you know, actually, I kind of, I'd kind of like to break into that, you know, or this might be a great way for me to talk to them about marketing, which means we can drag, you know, Ivan and Teresa in as well as another collaboration by targeting some of those you know, medical laboratory type businesses. And look, we have somebody who can do this particular thing, right? So, I mean, it might not look to, to most people like my market and Nancy's market might even be close to the same. But, um, you know, doing something together with even the most tenuous link can sometimes develop into something much more significant. Who would have known that I would have you know, sort of that medical industry minds more. Uh, no, I, I totally agree. Just want to add to that. Like our industry is so small. It's almost, um, well, it's a, it's a awkward word to use, but it's almost like incestuous because you constantly have the same people like working on the same things, looking at the same things, doing the same type of collaboration. And it's almost like a big secret that no one else knows about because you're always talking to the same people, learning about the same things. And eventually, you know, you become competitors of like the same thing and everybody else, like your potential clients, they actually want to look for you, but they don't know where you are and what you do because you only talk to the same people. You have like a very small community and that's the problem we face, um, to be honest. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually really good insight because, um, and, and I think for every business, that's the point. What is What do we need to break past? Um, and collaboration is a great way to do that. Um, so that's a, a good way to sort of look at, um, you know, where are there different markets that there might be some interest, right? So no, most markets that I work with maybe don't have any connection, but I will tell you that um, in the back of my head already, there's a couple of, you know, sort of tenuous links that, that might have some value. Um, so I think that, that opening that door and, and if you've got the alignment in a couple of things and you just have some similar goals, like you know, breaking into a new market or connecting with five or 10 different people, even if it's an industry outside of yours, if that goal matches, then do the collaboration. You never know what's going to come out of it. So I think it's a really wise idea. Sure, I'm just going to make a, a quick comment. Sorry. Yeah. Um, something like myself with first aid and CPR, um, it, you would never think of Anthony as being a collaborator, but him and I have the same um, market, the B&B. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and probably similar size businesses as well. Mm -hmm. well we need to talk. <laughs> there we oh, go. I'm excited to talk to all of you guys. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do now is this. There are opportunities. And so what I'd like to do is just take a minute and go around. And out of all of the things, I know it's a lot, you know, we've now heard what each other does on here. There's going to be opportunity for us to collaborate. And so what I want to do is just give you guys a moment to talk about you know, which of those collaborations might be really interesting to you and who on here you think, hey, is this a possibility? And so what I, what we just want to do is get the juices rolling, right? So no, some of these collaborations may not work at all and, and may not be viable at all. Um, but just sharing that information, because I guarantee you we're going to walk away and be like, oh, hey, two hours from now when we're doing something, I'm driving the tractor down the, you know, um, I'm going to go, oh my God, I totally just realized I could have. So I just want to take a minute and Aiden, I'm going to let you start because you had a couple of ideas already and I think you started off fantastically. Um, so I'm going to let you uh, take it away. <laughs> and you're still on, you're still on mute. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> It just takes me a couple minutes to grab my mouse and move my mouse. But anyway, um, yeah, so, yeah, as I said earlier, I am looking for reviews. Just go to my Facebook, Race Gallery, G plus G, and write a review if you've been here. Um, I don't think any of you have been here to Grace Gallery yet. So I, have I, I, hope, to, I hope to see you guys at some point. Um, and then we have... Uh, let's see what else is there. Um, the other one was uh, co-hosting an event. Yes, I have done that before in my past. Uh, one of them was co-hosting an event with Arbon, um, and we did a uh, a uh, what is it called? art market, I guess you could say, kind of thing. It wasn't really an art market. It was a small business market. So I did that in the backyard. Uh, I, I had 50 booths of all small businesses and 10 by 10 spaces with over 50 people here, uh, 50 businesses, that is. And uh, they actually had about like two or three people each anyway. But uh, um that was a that was unfortunately an event that went kind of sideways um it was it was a great idea we got a lot of we got a lot of people that were interested all the small businesses they were fantastic but no customers came absolutely nobody came uh and we went out there we got all kinds of signs some people got their volunteers that they had for the day actually to go out there with big signs and go out to the corner of the street and say come and see our little come and see our little market come and check it out and um yeah just unfortunately i think we had two customers in the whole day and uh that was that was pretty sad uh another thing i did was the uh a collaboration with a bunch of musicians last year called the grace called uh Community Harvest Barbecue, Simply for Seizures. And that was an event that I collaborated with, with the, uh, not just local musicians here in Brantford. I had seven wonderful, wonderful local musicians here. Uh, big bands, a couple of them were very big bands. Uh, one was the uh, Practically Hip, if you guys know, are familiar with that. That's actually a big band, okay. not just a small little band. That's a very popular band. Um, and, uh, and I had Inertia as well, which is another well-known band. Um, and, uh, she actually, uh, Chris and Besmer, the lead of Inertia, she actually, uh, was the one that collaborated with me to help put this, pull this event together and stuff like that. Uh, and the other one was, of course, the collaboration with the Epilepsy Society out of Southern Ontario. And, um, Unfortunately, again, uh, it was an event um, that I thought would have, been, would have pulled a lot of people in because it was a great fundraising event. I had the sponsors. I had the vendors. Uh, I was looking for nine vendors, particularly for the little market. 
and uh, and we did get them. Uh, and unfortunately, again, uh, we tried to raise a lot of money for the Epilepsy Society of Southern Ontario, and unfortunately, it didn't pan out. Uh, we didn't really have a lot of people. We had, in total, about uh, 30 people, 30 guests come, and uh, that that's a good number, but it's not a good number for bands, and it's not a good number for merchandise and the, the other vendors and stuff like that, because not everybody buys from those vendors, right? So, um, and, so, so Aiden, you know what? I think that's really good feedback, because I think that there's opportunity there. Um, sometimes it takes, most events, uh, organizers will tell you, sometimes it can take um, two to three years to get a, a particular event that's happening mm -hmm. continually going. So that's really good feedback because I think it's important for people to also know what the potential risks are in whatever their collaboration is. If you're not aware of what the potential risks are, um, you know, then things can go sideways and, uh, and, not, and not get the outcomes that you're looking for. And I think that's the case with everything. Um, so thank you for sharing that. That was really good, really good insight. Um, and the other one is contests. Um, now I've, I've ran a few contests with, I've collaborated on a few contests with a few others. Um, and, uh, and the contests actually went pretty good, um, that I've had in the past and I will continue to do those and collaborate awesome. on those. But the community harvest barbecue for the, for this year, uh, has been canceled. Uh, due right. to the coronavirus, so uh, yeah, and unfortunately, I, I know it's going to be in the fall, yes. and it could possibly still go, but it's too late to plan anything now because it's uh, it's been interrupted by COVID. And, yeah, uh, um, and a lot of people, people aren't are doing it virtually though. Yeah. yeah, so Donna, I saw that you had your hand up there. I just had a quick thing for Aiden. Um, I've not been to your facility because obviously I'm in another province right now. Uh, but are you able to? let people use your your location for meetings because if you have regular people coming for a one hour or two hour meetings they will tag where they were and it's a great social media way to let people know and if you have 10 people coming they're always going to remember you top of mind when your your industry comes up in their conversation actually that brings up another very good point and something i was actually going to talk about but i didn't get around to it um but yeah another thing that i have is something that you just suggested i have something called grace gallery presents social networking it is a big network event uh that that basically uh brings people all across southern ontario that have businesses and um and like I, I'm part of a very giant network uh, of individuals and people. And um, basically uh, not just those people, but business people. And uh, they, it, it's not too difficult to get people coming from Toronto, Hamilton, London, stuff like that. Uh, and, um, and, and you'll encounter those people here because of my connection. So so Aiden also uh, brings in guest speakers. So if someone was looking for an opportunity to uh, do some guest speaking, that might be a great uh, opportunity because he does hold it in his gallery, which by the way, is in this lovely old um, downtown. Yeah, it's, it's, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. it's a beautiful house. So, um, so if you get that opportunity, um, so let's see, um, Anthony, I, you had already said that you have some interest in class, which ones stand out to you and what do you see as potential collaborations? Um, so Catherine, because, um, I am looking to have all my cleaning technicians, um, uh, first aid and CPR trained to differentiate myself from all the other cleaning companies, yeah. right? I want to add value to the, to, to the, to the businesses and to the homeowners that we're in there and something does arise. At least, you know, you have a certified, um, first aid, um, personnel on hand mm -hmm. to help you in any need. So. I wrote, already wrote down her information from the beginning of um, this um, um, conference call, but I want to connect with everybody because at the end of the day, you all are my target market, 
right? So eventually I will definitely make connections with everybody here and see where we can both add value to each other. But as of right now, um, Catherine is somebody, I was already gonna pay for this service from somebody else online. I was just gonna Google search it. So might as well now I know she's here. I'm just gonna connect with her and see what we can do together. Awesome. Yay. I love it when a plan comes together. Um, <laughs> Guys, I have to leave. I have a class. Uh, I, so I'm in an um, entrepreneur class uh, through Mohawk and it starts at 10, uh, 10 a.m. So I'm going to leave to get ready for that All class. Right. Well, thank you for joining you. us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Ivan, thank you for calling me on this call. Yeah, Hopefully we'll see you in the next week so as well. Yes, yes we will. Bye. And Catherine, I know... We'll Catherine, talk I know. Soon. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, Catherine, we'll talk soon. And everybody else, it was a pleasure meeting you guys. God bless you, and we'll see each other soon. Awesome. Bye, okay. Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And Catherine, I know that you do have to go as well. So um, thank you very much. Do you quickly before I don't know how much time you have before you have to go, but um, is there any are there any collaborations that stood out to you that you think would be effective? And is there anyone in the group that you can have quickly thought of already that there's an opportunity. Well, as I mentioned with Anthony, and it was because of our, our niche markets being the same, right? Um, but even with Nancy, um, as I'm expanding my um, my books and my online presence and courses and stuff like that, um, being in first aid, uh, you don't get. I mean, some of the pictures. Ivan will go, "What do you think of this picture?" And I'll go, "But they're doing CPR wrong." That's right. <laughs> right. That seems bad. Yeah. And if that's going to be, you know, so even just getting a scene that I would want. So something with, with Nancy and then possibly again, because I'm, that's the world I'm in that maybe I can get her name out. Right. Excellent. That's awesome. And I think, I think that there's opportunity <laughs> then. Okay. Bye Catherine. Thank bye, you. Bye guys. Catherine. Good seeing you. Bye. And I think there's opportunity as well in that to uh, to do stuff like the sharing resources and the reviews. And so there's multiple ways that a collaboration like that could really become uh, very effective. So, so uh, Nancy, seeing as you were uh, <laughs> you were named, um, are, what do you think? Which collaborations stand out to you as ones that would be really effective for building your business? And who, right. is that, who might there be that was here today that that would work with? Right, so th this meeting has been super helpful. You know, just talking to different people and like diverse topics really gets your, your brain going. I've been like jotting down notes, like inspiration notes that have been, you know, fleeting, but I think it actually does um, help me to like think about these things that you mentioned. Um, so for example, right now, because our uh, partnership has been a, a quite like a, brand new business that was only started in February uh, or March. So there are a lot of things that we still need to do and a lot of things we can um, build with other people, right? Like we can um, get Sherry, for example, we can get your advice for our, you know, team built and like a team organization and leadership because we have been needing a lot of leadership training since we've never learned that in school but now that we work with more people it has become like crucial right and doing collaborations and engage your own team members and your own audience has been like really important and then other members such as um like Teresa or Adam right like social media marketing website design uh Maggie right like copywriting writing things to really engage your audience that you know, you speak their language in, because we speak a lot of technical terms, yeah. right? But then to reach the right audience, we want to say things in a way that is approachable, friendly, and, you know, that yeah. targets the right people, right? So um, just everyone really, like you can probably find something that you can, that, that crosses over, right? Like into each other's businesses, yeah. Awesome, very cool. Um, Adam, what about you? Um, as far as like partnerships go, um, yeah, stuff like any that. Of those, any of those collaborative events or, or ideas that first of all stood out to you as ones that you'd be interested in doing? And then is there someone in particular, anybody in particular that you could see a good 
um, good opening to start talking about collaborations with. Still thinking about that, actually. It's definitely let me, um, it's, de it's definitely left me with quite a bit. Um, most of what I do is, is technical and I'm kind of used to going up to people and saying, hey, do you need help? So I'm not really, and I'm not really used to people and I'm not really used to asking people for help when it comes to that kind of stuff. It's kind of a difficult mindset to break. Um, in terms of what I think reliance and stuff like, in terms of like people I'd probably partner with and stuff. Yeah, probably Ivan, but, but I think it's also just because of reliability and because I've worked with them before, I know what to expect that kind of stability in the past, you know, in past jobs definitely helps. Right. Um, in terms of other um, things I might need, um, probably an eye for design, probably if I, if I may not understand anything. So maybe if I need to speak to say, you know, Nancy, if I need, if I need a second opinion on what my thing looks, uh, what my websites look like or something like that, you know, something, you know, something like that, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Still kind of just, you know, thinking of things to like where other people could sort of, you know, where I might need other people where I might need more help. Um, but it's definitely left me with quite a bit to, quite a bit to think about actually. Good. That's awesome. And you know what? Sometimes it takes a little bit more time to process and look at what something looks like, right? Yeah. Um, Maggie, what about you? So um, where, where do you see, what, what collaborations interest you and who do you think maybe there might be a good opportunity? Well, I can collaborate with almost anyone as a writer if you need copy, um, of course. But, um, and I definitely see maybe Ivan or Teresa since you do marketing. I mean, I don't have the technical skills that I need, but I can write, like if you have a customer, as Teresa suggested, maybe a travel agent, or it could be a hotel or a restaurant, I can um, do some pro uh, copyright promotion, that sort of thing, I can do your copy for you, and then you can bring in some of the other um, technical stuff, like I say, I'm lousy at technology, um, Adam, I could, I actually need a website, so <laughs> we may need to talk. Um, <laughs> Again, Nancy as well. Um, Aiden, I have some definite ideas for you. <laughs> An artistic background as well. I um, was never really a professional artist. I've sold exactly one painting in my whole life. Uh, but um, I've been a member of different art groups. I, although I haven't done any art in years. Uh, one of the suggestions I can think of right off the bat is you mentioned you have a Facebook page. If we become Facebook friends, I'm Facebook friends with a lot of artists. Some I've actually met, some I haven't. And when they post things, I share it, you know, so that gets, and I, I know some of my artist friends, they share it to other people as well. So that's definitely something. And I have a quick glance at your website. Um, what I see is you listing a lot of artists and a big commentary, but none of their artwork. That's something you might want to look at right there because people go visual. Um, so, you know, right idea. definitely some collaboration ideas to you. Also, you mentioned markets. Um, I know we can't do it in COVID particularly, but I know some of the artists are putting out online markets as well and doing online fairs and things like that. Um, obviously it's not the same, but you know, those are some ideas just from my own observations of being on, just being on Facebook. So. Awesome. Thank you for sharing those thoughts too, because I think yeah. that's really important. Sometimes the collaboration is just about brainstorming together, right? Yeah. So, awesome, thank you. So Donna, what about you? Um, I've only been a few hours into my business yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even into business because they're not in Canada. So I'm kind of just gonna leave myself neutral for now. <laughs> okay, fair enough, all right. <laughs> Um, I, but you know, there's always ideas besides we're doing brainstorming later anyways. Um, so <laughs> Ivan, what about you? Well, you know, as usual, um, I, I just love the whole brainstorming side of it, right? I mean, th that's really, that's really where everything kind of starts from. I mean, even the, the coffee meeting online, you know, your virtual coffee meeting, I love to, uh, you know, th that's how myself and Anthony uh, started out with uh, with an online uh, you know virtual meeting then we we met uh, physically uh, so there's all kinds of things that you can do you wouldn't believe the the um, the unbelievable ideas that come out of a half an hour or an hour 
brainstorm, right? Things that that are just so far flung that that yet you, you diarize them for you know years down the road when the technology catches up, so you can actually do it. But the thing is, is that uh, I I just love the the whole brainstorming aspect of it. So as far as people that, that I can actually do things with, you know, basically anybody. But I definitely love working with Adam uh, for sure. Uh, you know, he he's uh, he is relentlessly in the in the pursuit of getting things done right. So I, I dig that. I, he's just got a great way of also just dealing with you. I mean, he's as real as they come. So I love the guy. Um, I also, of course, you know, I'm too pronged because it's the marketing business. And of course, this great city as we're growing it and, uh, you know, working with people who want to uh, to get involved in that. So, uh, you know, brainstorming, that's that's the the root of it. Awesome. That's brilliant. And I have, you know, spent much more than half hour or an hour doing brainstorming with Ivan. <laughs> and there, there, ideas come from, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and there is such an advantage to having people coming from various industries, various experiences, you know, some of the, you know, little things you might not know about somebody in the, in the, uh, the back end, there might be a connection that just somehow doesn't come up in business. Um, but there's a connection there that you couldn't possibly have known about. And so sometimes that makes it really, really important. That's why Teresa, um, you know, Teresa, yeah, I know she loves me uh, because, uh, you know, if it's midnight and it's time for, for bed and I go, uh, I so I have this so. idea. She's thinking, oh, God, this is going to be until three o'clock in the morning. And so, yeah, poor thing. <laughs> up I, you know, it's funny because, um, so my, uh, my last corporate job, um, I had a fairly significant sized team, um, about 115 staff across two provinces. And, and, um, to this day, um, there are anybody who were managers or district managers that reported to me, um, to this day, I'm pretty sure that if you, if you, if I was to say, probably if anybody said, but if I was to say, so I was thinking they just literally start twitching and <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Oh God, here we go. <laughs> Get a notepad and a coffee. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think, I think that, uh, probably everybody enjoys that. So I, I have a challenge actually for you guys. And that is that I want you to make sure that in the course of the next week, everybody reaches out to at least two people who were here today, or if you didn't feel like there was good connection here today with, uh, both of those people, one of those people, find two people that you can reach out to in the next week and just talk about the idea of collaborations and what those kinds of collaborations might be. And like I said, it could just be reviews. It could be something more significant. It could be, you know, planning events or it could be, you know, marketing related. But I, I wanna challenge everybody to reach out and make two of those connections. So you talk to two people um, that have been here today that you're able to just open that conversation, have coffee and um, see where it goes from there. So. Um, can I add to that? Can I add to that? Can, yeah, yeah. On top of reaching out to two people, if you could actually uh, go ahead and uh, and write a review for three of those people, three people as well. Um, and if you get a if you get a review from somebody, can you just reciprocate? <laughs> Give a review back. That would be nice. <laughs> That's true. Actually, I've done reviews for people, and then you don't get that reciprocal one back, and you're like, "Are you kidding? All the work I did for you." Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so, um, and I'm sorry, Teresa, I'm not, I, I sometimes sort of assume that you're occupied, but is there any of those collaborations that stood out to you? Are you able to jump in? Uh, yeah, um, you know, they all kind of uh, hit me to different degrees. Um, you know, definitely before the lockdown, it would have been a little bit more um, flyers and you know, collaborating with others with designs and sending them out and kind of sharing the the design aspect of that. Um, but now you don't know what company's there or not. So um, you're definitely thinking about other collaborations that are going to be online. So definitely hosting other um, online groups or shows that we've kind of been doing now um, is really kind of at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think there's huge opportunity there probably for everybody. It doesn't matter whether your businesses are connected. There's always an opportunity for that um, online uh, way to work together. So, 
Okay, I'm, I'm conscious of time. And uh, so much as I would love to uh, chat even further, um, I am hoping to see everybody again next week. Um, but run, now, run, run through the, uh, the, the lineup for the week. Uh, so for, uh, we don't have anything this Tuesday coming. Nothing tomorrow, no. Nothing tomorrow, okay. Um, sometimes if I haven't looked at my calendar, I'm like, what am I doing in the next hour? Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> our Wednesday night is the uh, Mastermind Jam that Melissa hosts. And so they have some really interesting conversations. I know they were talking about financial stuff. Obviously this week you guys are talking about how can you make money off of the back end of, uh, was it Google? YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube, it was YouTube. Yeah. It took a little uh, bit to get and, to that, but yes. And those are great opportunities because they may not be a huge source of income to begin with, but when you start thinking about layering um, various things together, um, there's opportunity for residual and for um, really building slow, but building momentum as you go. So that's a good one. And then Thursday morning, Catherine does our tech talk and uh, she has some great conversations about, you know, just things that most terrify most of us. Um, so <laughs> we've learned about printers, we've learned about internet security. And I do believe actually that this week coming is an internet security based conversation, I think. Um, yeah, just to follow up on last week's, yeah, if you were on the call last week, we talked about the issues this week, we're gonna actually drill down and uh, talk about the solutions to, to protecting your data online. Perfect. And, uh, and then again, on Monday, next Monday, we will also have a Monday morning hustle call. Um, I haven't decided about the topic just yet, but you have to check out the Facebook page. Um, and you'll find there because I usually post a few days in advance what our topic is going to be. Um, but as always, thank you for joining uh, this great city and for joining our call this morning, the Monday morning hustle. Um, it's wonderful to have you guys all here. Uh, you can sign up for the events on the website. So if you go to the website, the event page always has all of the, uh, the upcoming calls and events listed there. Um, of course, we post in Meetup as well. And then in the Facebook group, you can always find the information. Um, we would love your feedback. Um, we'd love to know what you like and what you'd like to see different or some new ideas um, about the shows, the conversations that we have, topics you have suggestions for, um, you know, any of those kinds of things. We'd love your feedback. So, of course, feel free to post um, on Facebook if you have some comments. Um, and you can, of course, Become reach out to us. What's Become that? A citizen. Become a citizen. So if you haven't already signed up, the citizen is free. Um, that just gives you access to all the information that uh, of who's who's a part of the directory and um, whatever discounts might be offered by any of the uh, business members. Um, and of course, it allows you to know what's going on when. And um, the business memberships, of course, we still have our deal on till the end of the month. So it's 260 instead of 490. What was Sorry? It's usually for okay. it's now on for 260 for business memberships and that gives you a direction listing and a whole bunch of other great things. So yeah. And of course we are looking at our rollout to uh, sort of returning to the post COVID or pre COVID, uh, <laughs> you know, membership based stuff. We've been doing lots of free stuff, which is awesome. Um, but we will be looking at making those alterations coming up in the near future. So you won't necessarily see quite so many of these events, but the members will have access to so many more things um, as we're building all of that. And um, so if this is your only experience so far, please go and check out the website, check out the Facebook page put your comments in there, reach out to us directly. And I would like to extend an invitation to anybody. Um, if you are looking for um, just some conversation, uh, you wanna do a brainstorming session, I am absolutely happy to do that. It's part of the process of design thinking. And it's one of the things that I do. So I would welcome that, um, you know, we'll do a half hour chat by all means. So for today, thank you all so very much. Stay warm, stay cool. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will see you next week. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. See you Bye.